What's up guys? Today I'm going to show you how to make a super easy bioactive terrarium. A bioactive terrarium is one that contains both plants and animals. The animals we'll be using are called springtails and their role in the terrarium is to consume any mould, decaying leaves or fallen plant matter. They then turn this into waste which helps fertilise the plants. So within the ecosystem the springtails and plants live in a kind of harmony together. Here is what you'll need to make the terrarium. A glass container. I'm using a preserve jar, but feel free to use whatever you like. Just make sure it has a lid so it keeps the humidity inside. After all, that is the whole point of a terrarium. Suitable terrarium plants. In this case, I'm using a nephrodepis fern, but feel free to use whichever plants you like. Ferns were a great choice because they grow in lower light and damp areas, making them an ideal choice for a terrarium. Go to your local plant shop or garden centre and I guarantee they will have something you can use. Terrarium soil. It's super important that you do not skip this step. You can buy a really good one from Grow Tropicals and use code TERRARIUMBEN for 10% off. Spray bottle filled with some filtered water. Don't use tap water because your plants and microfauna will not like it. Springtails. I'm using some from an existing terrarium but you can buy some from Micro Exotics or if you have a compost pile or live near an area with lots of fallen leaves, then dig away a small section and take a small amount of soil. The chances are there'll be some native springtails in there. Here's how we make the terrarium. First, take the stickers off the jar, as it's easier to do this when there are no plants or soil inside. Thankfully, these came off easily, but you may need to soak the jar in some hot water for a short while first. Once that's done, it's time to add in the terrarium soil. Fill up the container so it's around a fifth to a quarter full. I like to arrange it so it's higher at the back and lower at the front, as this adds a sense of depth and scale. I go on about this a lot, but please make sure that you use a good quality terrarium soil. Garden centre compost is not suitable and it will eventually lead to the demise of your plants. Terrarium soil should be airy, water retentive, well draining and despite what many people say, it should have a nutritional value. I always water the terrarium at this point as it stops the substrate moving when it's time to plant. The water you use is really important too. Often, tap water contains harsh chemicals and in my city, the water is on the alkaline side. This builds up in the soil and it can actually stop the plants from taking in nutrients. It will also leave a residue on the glass which can be difficult to remove, so it's best to use distilled, deionized, bottled, filtered or reverse osmosis water. Ferns are often a great choice for terrariums because they thrive in the high humidity. It's good practice to loosen the root ball before it goes in, as this helps the roots find their way into the new soil. Once that's done, place the fern to one side, and using a pencil or chopstick, make a hole in the centre of the soil for the fern to go into. Take your fern and carefully place it into the hole. Ah, as you can see, the plant is too big for the container, but worry not, I'm going to show you a little trick. This might seem barbaric, but trust me on this. Find the center of the plant and split the fern into two. You may lose a few leaves and that's normal, but you now have two ferns that will fit inside the container. Now place your suitably sized fern into the hole that you just made and firm it in place. Like loosening the root ball, firming plants in place is a good horticultural practice as it reduces the air pockets between the roots and soil. It's now time for the springtails. You may have your own culture, but all of mine are in other terrariums, so I'm going to transfer them from one into the other. As you can see, there are a few on this sequoia cone. I gently tap it so the springtails fall off and into our new terrarium. We're nearly complete. At this point, I wipe down any bits of soil on the glass and give the terrarium a final spray with some water. I take a small screwdriver and hammer a tiny hole into the top of the container. The air that this allows in will be beneficial to the springtails and the plants. I wholeheartedly believe that airflow is a key component to terrarium health, and by adding a small hole in the top, you're preventing the atmosphere from becoming stagnant and increasing your chances of success. 
As there is nothing for the springtails to currently feed on, I'm going to sprinkle in a tiny amount of baker's yeast. Once that moulds over, the springtails will have something to feed on. In nature, springtails can often be found in leaf mould piles, so I've decided to add a small amount of leaf litter to this terrarium. You don't have to do this, but I think the springtails will appreciate it. So that is how you make a super easy bioactive terrarium. I think that this is an especially good activity for children, as it gives them the chance to have an easy to care for pet, which is also fascinating to observe. You won't rack up a big vet bill with springtails. Thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed the video let me know in the comment section below. I'd also like to personally invite you to join our beginner friendly Facebook discussion group. It's called Terrarium Group and the link is in the description below. As always thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.